talking to me? Then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm talking to her! her, her. What? What is eyeline? It sounds simple, but it's actually trickier than you might imagine. She was the greatest piece of ass I've ever had, and I've had them all over the world. Report back to me when, uh, I don't know, when it makes sense. Welcome to the Director's Toolbox. My name is Rob McFarlane, where we analyze film and TV to show you just how they do it. Eyeline is the line the audience creates in their mind between two characters or a character and an object. So why is the eyeline really that important? Well, what it does is it actually helps the audience understand who is talking to who, and it also allows us to understand screen direction. Where are characters in conjunction to one another? Where are they in the space? sounds kind of simple. Why would I make an episode about eyeline if it's just about making sure they look in the right direction? Well, when you're actually doing it in camera, you're filming your actors, it can be a little trickier than that. Because sometimes you have characters on different elevations. Sometimes they might be standing in the same space, but one actor is quite a bit taller than the other. But when they actually look at one another, the camera may actually make it look slightly different, especially if you're using a Dutch tilt. The character's eye lines may miss completely. Therefore, whenever you're doing this to get a correct eye line, you need to ensure that you actually reference your other image, your opposite image in that conversation to make sure that your eye lines match. But we can go one step deeper than that. We can actually make the eye line help tell the story. By changing where and how your characters look at one another, we can actually enhance the experience of your story, the experience of that emotion. Are there are people who pay a lot of money for that information. So how do we use eyeline to enhance the drama of your scene? Well, you can start to think about height, or more specifically, changing the height of your characters so they actually have to look up and down at one another, depending on where you put them, to enhance that moment. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! And this is something that you can play with in your scenes, such as this moment from Arrival. But we can go further than that. What if you don't want your character's eye lines to meet? What if this is a way of showing that your characters aren't connected at all? This scene from a social network shows this in a brilliant example between two characters. Now, we wouldn't normally expect to show an eye line between two characters on a telephone because they're not in the same room. I'm not mad. I mean, I guess she just likes the attention. See, Gretch, I told you she's not mad at you. I can't believe you think I like attention. Okay, love ya. See you tomorrow. But you'd be surprised. Many movies will actually show characters looking at each other even though they're not in the same room because they're on two phones. This helps us understand that they are connected, that they're talking to one another. But David Fincher takes it a step further by completely putting the characters on opposite sides of the screen looking away from one another we really understand that the characters do not see eye to eye on this subject, quite literally, and it enhances, therefore, our understanding of their conflict. Holy shit! Fire! What's wrong with you? Another way of using eyeline is, well, we tend to move where we're looking. But how do we use this to enhance our scenes? Most movies will have given the lead character, or all of the characters, a particular desire. And this desire tends to be in another physical location to where they are at that moment. Take, for example, The Wizard of Oz. There's Emerald City! Oh, we're almost there! So most of the time, you're going to move your protagonist in the direction of their desire, their goal. And to do that, they will often look in that direction. You can even use this eyeline, this look 
to show other desires, be it for money, drugs, sex. We understand the desire of the character based on how and when they look at something. How long do they look at that for? But we can take it one step further. What if that character doesn't want to let another character know that they have this desire, that they want this object, item or thing? Well, maybe they would avert their eyes, change their eyeline, not to give up their inner desire. What if you have a woman who finds out her husband has been cheating on her? But to exact her revenge, she must convince her husband that everything is normal and fine. How would her eyes convince her husband or reveal that something is wrong? When we know someone intimately, we understand how each other's looks reveal our inner world. We know when something is wrong just by looking at someone's eyes. So when doing your scene analysis, think about what your characters would be focused upon. What would they want to look at? Or what would they not want to look at and why? <gasps> I can't watch! <laughs> And then you can really get an idea of how you're going to direct the scene. How is your eyeline going to tell the story? Thank you for making this far in the episode. Don't forget to check out this link above and the link down below to my Cinematic Language 101 course to help you master your cinematic language.